Hello, students. We are in assignment 10.6. So far, uh, we have uh, discussed the first question, width of uh, central bright in case of diffraction pattern, and we also saw comparison of interference and diffraction pattern in the last video. In uh, this one, we have Aries disk and we will see Rayleigh's criterion. So let us start. We know that uh, suppose if you have a single slit from which uh, light is allowed to pass, uh, at that time whole of the wavefront cannot uh, pass through the uh, slit and as a result on screen uh, what we get is dark by bright dark bright bands. So suppose uh, we allow light to pass through only this much gap. So this is the slit from which light is allowed to pass through. What we get on the other side is bands of light and dark region. So center is bright and then you have some dark region. Again you have a bright region and again you have a dark region. But uh, what if instead of slit if we use circular uh, aperture. So which kind of pattern we will get there? So in case if you have suppose if I have a small hole say pin hole and from this pin hole if we allow light to enter now in that case what we get on other side is again uh, definitely dark bright dark bright regions are observed but now the shape is not same so now what we get is rings where central one is bright then dark So such rings we get but again uh, definitely there are regions of brightness and darkness because the interference does take place, this shape of the aperture has changed. And uh, in this case how much is the width of this uh, center, width of this center angle in terms of angle if we express it is 1.22 lambda by uh, 2a where 2a is the aperture size and distance wise if we uh, think how much is the distance so in terms of distance it is 1.22 lambda f by 2a and this disk this disk is called Aries disk Aries disk which is uh, nothing but central bright in case of uh, circular aperture. Now uh, why this is important? This is important because uh, whenever we observe uh, distant stars or maybe some tiny objects from microscope, uh, the light or the wavefront is passing through the lens of telescope or microscope which is very similar to this circular aperture and because of that Suppose if you are observing some star through telescope, what you get is such pattern, not image of star, you get uh, dark bright, dark bright, circular pattern of that uh, uh, star instead of a single image of the star. And uh, what if two stars are very close by? So when, the, when we are looking at uh, image of some star, Actually, the image is uh, observed more like uh, interference, diffraction pattern, sorry, not interference. And uh, this central bright, bright is considered as image of star. But what if there are two stars? In that case, you will have two diffraction patterns being created. Okay, and uh, what if the stars are very close? Okay, when the stars are very close, the problem starts. So suppose, uh, let us consider this case, so 
this is central maxima of first star central maxima of second star then you have first minima of uh, first star let me label them as a and b uh, this is first minima of star b okay and uh, then again you have uh, first maxima of a and you have first maxima of a so as long as this uh, maxima are well separated we don't have any problem because you will get two central maxima far, far away from each other and you can distinguish between the two stars a and b but what if they start start overlapping so problem starts when the objects are very close so consider this case so uh, what is the situation a and b their centers are still uh, separated central bright is separated but first minima is almost touching each other okay and uh, let me go one step further now what has happened the central maxima of one is touching first maxima sorry first minima of the other one see can we see a and b as separate objects yes yet you can see the two as separate object but what if we arrive at condition like this what is happening now now the two centers are almost overlapping each other and as a result now the telescope will not be able to differentiate between this two and this object will be considered as single star or single object so how long a and b can be observed separately for that Rayleigh gave the criteria the condition is that uh, central maxima of one can overlap first minima of other but it cannot go uh, further closer so in this case what has happened the two central maxima are touching each other that is not allowed so two objects can be seen separately distinctly as long as as long as central maxima of one does not overlap central maxima of other or in other words you may say central maxima of one uh, is overlapping with first minima of second but not closer than that so that is Rayleigh's criteria to see two objects distinctly separately thank you